Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're doing really well. Happy Thursday to you all and welcome to our Stories Hosts. Today, we have the fabulous co-founder, Patrick McGurk, um, from Salty Skincare brand. Um, is a luxury skincare at Travel Skincare brand. And we're just going to wait for Patrick to send me a request. But Salty is a brand um, known for their fabulous travel skincare. So let me see. Hi guys, you're very welcome. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us at Salty. Salty, I see Salty coming on. Thank you for joining us today on our Stories Hosts. Um, and I'm just waiting for Patrick, co-founder of Salty Sun. To, um, to come on and be our guest today on Stories Hosts. So let me see. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're well. Me. Hi, guys. You're very welcome. Hi, Patrick. How are you? I'm very well. Good afternoon, Tonya. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon afternoon to you i'm just going to turn my volume up a little bit lovely to see you how are you doing good well the sun's out i'm off on holiday next week so that's reasons to be um smiling and reasons yes. to be happy when you're in the sun care game so yeah very absolutely well and I am so delighted to have you with us today, really to unpick your brain. All side, tell us a little bit about your brand and also to tell us a little bit about your journey. So thank you for taking the time to, um, to join us today on Stories Hosts. As you know, we're all about storytelling and so are you. So I have lots of questions, but maybe to kick us off, you would like to share a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your brand, and um, where do you live? A bit about family, et cetera. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, so well, start with me, I guess. So I live in Oxfordshire. Um, live out in the, in the country, spent 20 years in London and my career was working in big brands. I was at Coca-Cola for 10 years working combination of brand and supply chain um, and actually moved out to Oxfordshire when, um, when, um, when our kids were quite little, quite young. Um, and they're certainly children who um, enjoy using our SPF. I say enjoy sometimes, regardless of how high quality, trying to get the kids to wear sun cream can, can be a little bit of a battle. But um, we came up with the concept for Salty probably about four and a half years ago. I say we, it's myself and my co-founder, Sam. And what we wanted to do was create a brand and a product set that was disruptive in a space that we just felt was done really badly. Um, and actually, if I look at it, um, I remember on a trip to Mykonos and that we're a lovely, lovely beach club and everything about the place was perfect, except for the sun cream. And we went to buy some SPF and you know, you, you have the most fabulous cocktails. Um, the food was incredible. Um, but lo and behold, the SPF on offer was quite frankly budget, um, poor quality. It was like applying, uh, I won't name our competitor brand, um, <laughs> but it, it was like applying emulsion. Um, yeah. And we sat there and said, this can be done so much better. Um, and myself and Sam, we'd worked together first um, around about 10 years ago. Um, it was at a time at which I was, I was at Coca-Cola um, and Sam was working, investing actually in sustainable industries. And we actually created a joint venture, which was the largest plastic recycling facility in the world for plastic bottles. Right. Um, um, which Coca-Cola, through um, the guys in my, my area, had invested in. And it was, you know, a, a really disruptive, different thing to do. Um, we did some incredible things at the London 2012 Olympics around that. Um, and from that period on, myself and Sam explored areas in terms of consumer opportunities that we might work on. Um, and from there and from seeing that, you know, SPF was such an area of opportunity and just that, you know, there weren't brands out there doing what we thought was possible was really the genesis of where we get to today and the brand and the products and everything that underpins what we're about. And, and as you say, a big part of that is storytelling, um, yes. both visual, but visual, but also words, you know, so much of storytelling now seems to be, you know, a hashtag and, a, and an image. And, you know, sometimes that can be inspiring, but often it's so much more than that. Um, yeah. It's why an opportunity like this is great, because you actually have a conversation, talk with some depth about things that we're passionate about. 
I know. Thank you for sharing that. So let's unpack a little bit about that because, I mean, you definitely are a disruptive brand. You're definitely, you know, there's, it's incredible what you're doing. Um, and, you know, your products are absolutely fantastic. And we got to know each other, I think it was last year, we, we started mm. to collaborate together. And what you've been doing, I mean, I've sat back as a, as a founder of a brand and I'm amazed and I admire, you know, your ethos and, um, and everything else. So, you know, in, obviously you saw a, a gap in the market. Um, you know, you tried other brands and you, especially in, in Mykonos where you had said that, you know, just wasn't something there available for you. So in terms of coming from your, your, your background, you know, in business and Coca-Cola, et cetera, you know, you went into something completely new. You launched a brand, you needed to create a product. And um, what, what did that journey look like? Obviously, you, it's yourself and your business partner. Mm. Um, do you bring different um, sort of gift sets to the, to the positions that you both carry? Um, you know, how did you get from concept to the, to the shop floor? Yeah, I, I wonder that myself sometimes, actually, when you kind of, when you look out there, I still actually, I think back to, we walked into Selfridges before we even had a product um, and pitched something and we had some little testers and we had a very nice PowerPoint presentation, but we didn't have a complete product. Um, but what we did was t told them a story. Um, the, you know, the, the, the formulated product was there and it was incredible. It was the lightest SPF that those buyers had ever tried. But the thing that I think really resonated with them was the way in which we talked about travel, the way in which we connected to the shopping experience that someone has um, what, before they go on holiday. The fact that actually many of us, as I say, I'm off on holiday next week. I think the anticipation is often greater than the actual event yes. of the moment itself. And it's tapping yeah. into that, that positive mindset around travel is a big part of it. How do we make it happen, though? I think um, through a mindset that said um, anything's possible. Um, yes. And one of the things we've since discovered is actually formulating SPF is very hard. Um, you know, our launch product was um, our face 50 SPF. This is one of our C and Sun formulas. We went through, I think, pushing 180 iterations to get to this product yes. because creating something that um, delivers that level of protection that um, ha ha has um, works well with all skin types, is suitable for people with very sensitive skin and is light to apply is <laughs> rather easier said than done. And we discovered that that was probably one of the reasons that there hasn't been a lot of in innovation in sun care. Um, but it was bringing a mindset to say, look, it is possible. It is possible. There's always a way around and a way of finding solutions. And, you know, like I'm sure like yourself and like so many brands, you keep hitting these barriers and it's bringing that mindset that says, no, we, 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 we can create something here. We can make it work. Yeah. We can work with we can go and find the expertise that we don't have. Um, as you say, you know, coming from outside the industry, I think we brought lots of expertise around understanding consumer behaviors, understanding brand, but probably less around formulation, less around going and developing something that, um, that, that delivered to those needs. So it's, yes. finding, it's finding brilliant people to work with. It's never say, accepting that no's an answer. And it's also accepting what you're not good at and going finding brilliant people who are good at that. And I think, you know, that's, that's absolutely into the DNA of what we are as a business and what we are to work with. And hopefully when we work with partners, they, they get a little flavor of that as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I understand exactly where you saw the gap in the market, because when you go to th SPF 30 or 50, um, you really get the gloopy, thick product. And it's very difficult to put on your kids or it's very difficult to put on, you know, your skin. So what is your unique point of difference in terms not I've tried your product. I do know, but share, you know, with the with the rest of the guys that are, are on with us today. Yeah. Um, in simple terms, the lightest SPF. So our SPF 50 feels more like, and um, we've got a number now, we'll maybe talk about that in a little while, but um, it feels like the most luxurious moisturizer would be part of a daily routine. Um, so, that, so that's the first part. The second part, which is absolutely to the heart of stories, is the scent. Scents yeah. are so important, triggering our, our moments and memories and feelings and emotions. Um, yeah. and, and again, if I look at, you know, some of our competitors out there, I don't feel like they've spent all that long thinking about these things. You know, their packaging will often look like the sunshine and it's almost as if they've gone, okay, it's going to be sunny. So people want something that's packaged in a bright orange pack. 
Yeah. Um, oh, um, okay, it's about sunshine. Therefore, let's have it smelling of sweet fruit because that makes you feel of holiday. Yes. And the result of what that brand looks like and what those those scents are, you know, just I don't I don't think it's 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 what a consumer is looking for. Um, yeah. I still come back before we launched. We did a. Um, um, I call it a focus group. It's some of my wife's friends sat around the kitchen table eating some sushi and talking about experience of SPF. And what came through was I'd never, having been around brands for, you know, a couple of decades, come across a category where people were so promiscuous and so dissatisfied with what was out there. Um, and that's because, you know, the products just weren't good enough and the brand yeah. proposition just wasn't good enough for those sorts of reasons. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I love the idea that this is a daily skincare. It's not a product that you're just going to pick up when you're going to a hot country or when it comes into the summer. What you've mm -hmm. created is something that we add to our skincare, skincare um, daily regimes, you know, routine. So I, I definitely think it's amazing. And you've got, the, I, I must admit, for those guys who are watching and have not smelt any of the products they are incredible i mean you're talking very beautiful perfume blend that you've put in there you know it's really is set aside from any other product that i've ever tried and i know when we first um sort of collaborated together we we had we did the hand it was the hand sanitizers mm. and my goodness the uh, feedback we were getting about your brand was absolutely incredible so, I mean, I, congratulations on getting the balance so well. And it smells beautiful as well. Um, so that, well, there's, that... there's, there's no greater endorsement on scent than yourself. So um, oh. that's, 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 that's lovely to hear. Lovely to hear. Yeah. And, you know, your brand sits so well with us as well in terms of storytelling. You touched on it a little bit there. Mm. Um, and when you go onto your website and you, you can, it is poetic and it's beautiful, some of, some of the copy that you have on there. You know, why is storytelling important to you? You know, you touched on it a little bit earlier, but um, could you just unpack that a little bit? Mm. Yeah, I'd love to. And, 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 it, and it is, we, you know, we describe ourselves as being passionate about transformative travel and I think the way in which travel from a sustainability perspective fits into our modern world I think is really challenging and it's difficult yeah. to tackle for some people um, and you know my background experience is that some of the most important shaping moments in my life I consider myself to be real internationalist in a world that's really shrunk through a combination of you know political zeitgeist and what's you know COVID as well that actually travel can create and embed such curiosity and such opportunity to understand people who don't look like ourselves, who have different life experiences. Um, and both myself, and my co-founder, Sam, have been very lucky, you know, traveled to some incredible places. Um, and we have a real passion, that, a passion that that positive curiosity that comes with travel can be just so important. It can really um, shape us as people. It can shape yes. the world that, that we live and work in. And telling that story and sharing those experiences as I say it's not as simple as sharing a nice photo of a beach with maybe our product sat in it you know we we do yes. plenty of that because our product looks lovely and we love going to lovely beaches but sharing those type of experiences and interactions um takes more than that and therefore we've really embraced that need to share those stories and see ourselves as an enabler of that sort of transformative travel yeah. um we've we just this year set up um, a charitable trust called the Salty Foundation. And that's really very much focused around, A, some of that storytelling, but also we'll, we're devoting 10% minimum of our profits each year to that organization to enable people who might not otherwise have that opportunity to see the world in that wider light to actually um, enjoy what I've certainly been very lucky and lucky to enjoy in, in, my, in my lifetime as well. So it's um yeah it's about telling those stories it's about engaging with people it's about seeing the world through a different lens it's about getting out of the little echo chambers that we can all occupy from time to time yeah no incredible and you touched on um your the foundation that you've started which i think is absolutely incredible um and i don't think you shine about it enough because i i mean it is it really is something um really fabulous that you do could you tell us a little bit about that so you say that there's you're putting proceeds is this a a charity of your own and do you want other brands to get involved with it what what's what exactly does that look like oh it sounds like you're writing me a check Tonya. the foundation <laughs> will happily accept that yes i mean we, so we're going 
I, I'm part joking. We, um, so we're definitely, we'll, we'll, in the first year, I think predominantly fund it ourselves, but we are reaching out to partners to join and to join in both working around the topics. And some of them are quite difficult topics with doing some work around international migration, which is, you know, difficult to talk around and quite tricky. Um, but we believe it's something that shouldn't just be hidden away. It shouldn't be hidden as part of a culture war. Um, and the things that empower people and um, necessitate people to maybe live somewhere different to where they are right now are, are really complex. Um, yes. And the foundation will do some study work around that. We're going to provide some bursaries. We're just actually um, finishing, uh, hopefully closing out a relationship with um, one of the London University colleges to fund bursaries for students who will do work in this space. And one of the things that we want to do is then use um, use our marketing and our ability to talk to people to actually share that on a much wider basis, um, yes. as well as giving opportunities to those students who probably otherwise wouldn't be able to study those courses, wouldn't be able to travel around that as well. So um, we, we're going to start by funding some of that ourselves. The foundation is a sister organisation, Charitable Trust, um, set up with very clear um, um, trustees and very clear goals around being part of that cultural piece. And and I think the other piece is we see lots of businesses that seek to offset, lots of businesses that sometimes maybe greenwash. Um, and actually what we want to do is something that's authentic and real, both to, to us as people, um, to Salty as a business, and to what we stand for in the wider world. And um, yeah, that's, that's yeah. what underpins it. And it probably comes across it's something we're really passionate about. And, yes. You know, um, we're passionate about formulating great products, but also passionate about having a positive, proactive impact on the world around us as well. Yeah, and it's it's absolutely incredible what you're doing. And I, do you know, was it something that you always both said as partners at the beginning? We want to have a charitable um, part to the business. Is that, or is it something that just has naturally come over the last? Because you're relatively young as a brand, mm. aren't you? You're pretty much the same as ourselves um, mm. in years. Um, you know, so but was that something that you really mm. wanted to filter into the business right from the beginning? Yeah, um, it's evolved to get to that place. I think it's the thing that myself and my business partner, Sam, had most in common. So when we weren't talking about, um, you know, plans to invest in a business, brand opportunities, or how we're going to get lots of people to see and um, learn about Salty, you know, over a beer, a glass of wine, we'd talk about how we're internationalists. We'd talk about how being part of, you know, in this post-Trump world that, you know, that, that being an internationalist, it takes, it takes effort. and. Yeah. Therefore, it, it developed in that guise and, and also hopefully a little bit of empathy to say that, you know, I've been very lucky to maybe visit over 50 countries in the world. Not everyone gets that opportunity. And rather than hiding that or feeling embarrassed about it, it's a way of saying, actually, how do we um, create something that means others maybe get to, to, to sample that opportunity in due course? And, um, and so that was underpinning it. And we weren't quite sure how to do that. We thought, uh, you know, we, we always talk about being a travel brand first and foremost, um, and we partner with so many um, travel industry partners now from travel agents through to hotels, through to individuals who are working in that sort of space. And it was through some of those conversations we came to the point of saying, actually, rather than just talking about this, it's time that we need to take some action. And it was last year we made the decision to say, OK, let's put this into something far more formal. Let's create a yeah. charitable trust and let's let's get on and um, do something that's really impactful. Yeah, and I love the idea that you've actually created your own and it's not just looking to see what else is out there, but it's do doing something that will satisfy you guys, uh, you know, as finders, but also that it's going to do something for, you, for, for, your, for your brand and it sits um, in line with everything. So I think it's, a, it's an amazing um, thing to do. And, you know, so you guys are um, salty or, or four, is that right? What age? That's right, that? four birthday. We ought to be celebrating, really. Yeah, we launched our first product just over three years ago. So um, we've been working on salty as a project probably for 18 months prior to launching. So we launched with Selfridges as exclusive on our first products back in 2019. So we, uh, we, we, we deal in summers a little bit, being an SPF business, an SPF brand. Yeah. So this is our fourth summer. Um, and so, yeah, we're really young. We're still really young and we're yeah. still learning and we're still understanding how best to, you know, share what we're about with the wider world. 
Yeah. And in terms, you launched um, into retail probably the same time as, my, as ourselves. Mm. Um, and then, of course, in 2020, we were hit with the pandemic. And, um, you know, how did you find that? Because you had already, you know, chose to be a D2C brand primarily. Um, mm. So did it really affect you much? Well, obviously, travel wasn't, wasn't moving at that stage. But I did read a fabulous review on your website by Sally Hughes. And I, I took it that it was around that time when we couldn't travel because she had spoke about the smell and been, bringing herself, you know, bringing her tears in her eyes or because it just took her to that place. Um, but what, in, on a business level, did it affect you much with um, the pandemic like the rest of us? Yeah, um, I'm just thinking back to that Sally Hughes moment. She writes beautifully and um, she's been Fabulous. a huge sport of ours, which is great, but... You know, I think if you describe back in, I don't know, February 2020, what the two years that followed looked like, we'd probably have packed up and gone and done something else because you know, we're a travel business. Um, fortunately, we didn't. Um, and fortunately, what we discovered was that actually um, we could talk to people about travel that was maybe a bit nearer to home. And we engaged, did a lot around staycation travel that dominated so much of last summer and the summer before. But what we also discovered was that actually, as we all coped with, you know, being in lockdown or being at home or not able to travel, that actually um, bringing a little bit of energy and treat and travel wellness into maybe um, spending an afternoon in the garden was something that actually really resonated with people. So um, back to May 2020, we had a really incredible selling period, actually. If you think back, I think everyone remembers those kind of sunny days. I think, I think it was true in Northern Ireland as much as it was yes. um, here, here in Southern England. We had the, an incredible month of weather. Um, no one could really do anything other than take their dog for a walk and, and, and lie yes. in the garden. Um, and what it seemed was people wanted to, to, to integrate Salty into, their, in, into those moments as well. So, that, so, that, so actually, we did far better than I would ever have hoped in that regard and um, equally yeah. being honest about it you know working remotely um you know our development cycle of new products was really challenging in terms of things that are far more hands-on um and it was no accident that we launched our premium hand sanitizer you know again it, it, the truth was salty hands was probably about number 16 or 18 on our product development list um yeah. and it, it soon accelerated when we saw the quality of hand products that were out there as everyone kind of broke out of lockdown in that yes. in that summer and therefore we went quick to get that product to market as well so again saw that you know wouldn't take no for an answer let's go and create something and get something out there that again is differentiated so yeah. uh, in true in truth it's been really hard um the really exciting bit now is you know i i, I barely I, I barely know someone who isn't off on some sort of travel around the next you know week yes. in, the U in the uk around the jubilee etc and you know, it's now a very different world. Um, yeah. You know, I, don't, I wouldn't say COVID's entirely in the rearview mirror, but it just feels so positive and um, so, so, so upbeat around uh, around travel that it means it's far easier Absolutely. for us to, to build and yeah. plan what, what, what our world looks like. Yeah, and you know, you're, you are right, because we were the same. Um, we had really concentrated on being a D2C brand primarily and um, I've really worked on our website prior to this, thankfully. But actually we find that people did want the luxury product. They did want the product that, to make them feel good. And I can understand why, you know, the weather was absolutely glorious that time that we first went into lockdown. So I can understand why people would want your product because it is luxurious to put on. The smell is uplifting. Um, it takes you to places and, it, you know, just like I would say in an instant, you smell something mm -hmm. and you're right back at that holiday or place. Yep. Um, so, you, you know, you, you started off with how many products? What, what did you launch with at the very outset then in 2019? Yeah, just four products. So we had two face products, um, which is in our uh, typical blue packaging. And then actually you can see some behind me and two body products, two body SPFs, our face products, both SPF 50 and the body of SPF 30. So it's quite a narrow range. Um, yes. But it, it gave us early momentum, which was great. Yeah. Um, and we've started developing from there. Yeah. And I knew, obviously, you guys started out yourselves. You self-financed, et cetera, and put money into the brand. Mm. And then, you know, the brand started to grow. And you, I believe, have gone into your third investment round. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, we're just uh, we're just we're just um, closing off with some investors at the moment on that. And yeah, we bootstrapped the business initially for the first year um, and actually brought some investment in just as we we're launching, just as we're coming to market. And I, I think what underpinned that was we 
we had belief that we could do it. Um, and we also didn't want to be a kitchen table business. Um, you know, I have huge admiration for people who continue to fund. Um, I know it's more of the angle, in fact, that you've taken, which is, you know, incredible, actually, because it makes it even tougher to make some of the bigger things happen. Very tough. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, but we, we wanted to scale and we wanted to move quickly and we're impatient. So um, we're willing to, you know, share some equity in return for some bringing some really, really strong investors on board. Um, and now bring that up to date. We've got some, you know, some really smart people who know the industry, who um, understand the direction we go in and as well as investing quite frankly they're bringing brilliant expertise and advice to the table as well so yeah. um you know that's definitely help helping us to scale but it's not right for everyone and you know um and um you know my wife works as an investor as a seed investor and it's interesting the type of personality type of um business plan that fits to that type of model looks quite different to those who can continue to organically build a business and do incredible things in that direction. Yeah. But it, it's, a, it's understanding, I think, both from a business planning and also from a personality perspective, what best suits um, and what yeah. works best. And also, yeah. quite frankly, if you can convince people, you, you've got a great plan. You know, people laugh at Dragon's Den, but every time we meet an investor, we're having a conversation on a video conference this morning with someone who's coming on board as an angel, it's just a mini dragon's den every time round, and it yes. you know it can be it can be exhausting and it can be distracting. Um, it can also be brilliant when they bring that expertise to the table. Yeah, and I love that, and that's what appeals to me actually is when it's bringing the expertise that you don't have to the table mm. and investing that way as well. And obviously, you know, I, I had shared with you before that we, you know, we were going down that route and getting investor ready, and because we want to be like yourself, mm. we want to scale. Um, but then it's kind of I keep getting cold feet, <laughs> uh, and then we keep putting a pause on it. But then again, you know, getting the new product out is really difficult. And you know, you we so many plans um, for stories. But you know, what would be your you know your top tip? You know, to dip your toes into that. Um, I mean, it's been very positive for you, and you've yeah. had really good. Obviously, your wife, you know, works in that arena, and I believe your business partner as well has come from that kind of background, were they be able to give you the security that you needed to actually take that step out to do that? I, I think so. So definitely being closer to that space and with some good advice there was definitely helpful. Um, I think the other piece, actually I tell a little story that we, um, we um, pitched at an investor event. This was a couple of years ago um, and there were eight, businesses um, pitching that day and to a group to a room of 100 150 investors and um, some really smart people and there were some brilliant businesses there um, we were very lucky we were the one who actually managed to get some investment from that event and a couple of really brilliant angels came on board but I listened to seven investors talk about the market and the problem for their product and uh, some Medicare products some tech products but they talked about the market what they didn't do was talk about themselves they didn't talk yeah. about because ultimately when someone's investing, if you're investing in stories, you're investing in um, some brilliant products. Yes. But you're investing in Tonya as someone who's going to make this. Agreed. Scale. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of people when they're seeking investment, forget that, um, forget the investors are really looking at you as a person. Um, and, you know, the number of investment decks I see where people are spending 20, 30, 40 slides talking about the market and the opportunity and the ability to scale. And really all of that is, is a proxy to talk about why you're believable, and why what you're doing yeah. is authentic to you and why you're going to make good decisions and why you'll learn as you go and why there's a chance that, and a very good chance that you'll make it work. And I, you yeah. know, I think that's something that often is missed, often is missed in, in those conversations as to A, whether to seek investment and B then, the, you know, the possibility of, of, of actually persuading someone to, to, to invest in you as well as to yeah. invest in your, in your business yeah. or your brand. Well, it's such great um, advice and hearing that from you because that's exactly, you know, what you, you need. You need somebody to believe in you and back you. You don't really need somebody to come and try and take you on a different direction. They need to believe in the finder and the, you know, and the direction. So, no, that's absolutely fabulous. And, I, you know, you're making me actually think that uh, there, there is a good side to this. So I, I may be picking your brain at some stage about this. Um, so Patrick, tell us what is next for Salty? Um, what's your plans for the future? Well, there are plans. Um, so Derry 
much a European plan for now. So we've toyed with previously whether we um, immediately look to break into the US market and to take our products to Australia. And we, we do ship to those markets and we, uh, and we do quite nicely on that. But our view is that there's actually within, the, with, within Europe a real opportunity to um, you know, grow our business. Um, there's a big opportunity, you touched on it earlier, that we started really as very much a, a holiday business. The products behind me were perfect as, as, as holiday destination SPFs. What we've done, and actually just two weeks ago, we launched this new product. So this is City Serum SPF Plus, and it is even lighter than those products I think that you've right. tried previously in terms of our core face products. Um, yep. But it, but it's it's part of a daily routine. So this is a three, six, five day a year product. So our, our um, daily protection formula, we've seen lots of our customers come back from holiday and then integrate it into their daily regime. But actually the scent of this, it, it does, it triggers memory to holidays, which is great, but not necessarily perfect every day of the year. The scent yeah. here is one of the critical things. I describe it as it's just so delicate it's glacial in terms of the scent and it just sits there to reassure that you've got your spf on on a daily basis and the reason i talk about this is we see great growth opportunity we see a beauty industry that often almost berates us to wear spf every single day and tells us off and people you know we've done a lot of survey with customers and and we're more widely on this and people often feel almost harassed into wearing spf on a daily basis yeah. Our belief is that if you create products, it, it changes the conversation. If you can create a product that's as great as daily moisturizer without SPF or with only UVA or um, protection that you're using, then actually the conversation takes care of itself. So we see big opportunity to be both a brilliant provider of SPF products for holidays, but also creating a range that is part of a daily routine. So I think that's a big part of how, how, how we're going to look to build and to build ourselves into people into people's everyday lives as well as into their um, carry-on luggage as well. Yeah, amazing. Um, that I, I have to try. I can't believe it is actually lighter than the products you have. So it's incredible that, you know, we want to have something light on our face like that, but still have the SPF um, protection. So it's, am it's amazing, you know, that product. And I love the idea that you're really concentrating on the European market as well, mm. you know, getting your roots in the foundation, your feet into the European um, market and the UK market, you know, first. So that's, um, that, that, that's really good. Good. It's good, wise move, I feel. And um, it's kind of, it's, it's where we would sit as well as a brand where we feel we really mm. want to develop ourselves as a UK, Irish, European brand, you know, so yeah. it's good that, you know, to hear that you guys are doing that also. Yeah, um, but I'm sure it's true of you as well. We've, you know, we've had moments of being distracted. We've had moments of um, investing in Facebook advertising to the Sun Belt in the US because we know there's a consumer out there who'd love our product. But I think sometimes digital media can give us a false view that we're closer to our consumers through digital media than we necessarily are. Um, okay. And actually, I think being, you know, being local. So we, we'll, we'll launch in the States. You know, we're busy. Actually, the formulation requirements are slightly different to, to yeah. actually land a product there. And we're going through that process and we will do that. But when we do it, we'll probably manufacture in the States. We'll have a team that works marketing out of the States as well. And I think that, that's important to remember that, you know, I talk about being internationalist. And there are so many things that we have in common. There's so many commonalities, um, you know, in terms of the world. But our relationship with the sun our expectations of what an SPF is for um, between different cultures and different races and different skin types. There's all these points of difference that I think are easy to ignore. Um, and it's being honest and authentic enough to say, actually, we've probably got something that's brilliant um, with our outlook in a Northern European kind of world. Um, you know, for us to go and properly enter the Australian market, I think there's huge potential for us to do that. And there's huge commonality. Yes. But the relationship with the sun, if you're living in, as my sister is in Manly in Sydney, is very different to the relationship with the sun yes. that I have li living in, you know, dreary, dreary Britain. Yeah, no, uh, agreed. And oh my goodness, it's been an absolute inspiration talking to you. I feel I could spend another half an hour just really picking your brains. We'll probably have to do that offline. But yeah. um, I always finish up, Patrick, doing a little bit of fun, quick fire questions. So we have created some for you and we want to just um, fire them out to hear um, your answers. So if we could start, how would you class your style? Oh, probably lack of. Um, 
<laughs> classify myself. I think probably, um, in fact, I'm, I'm wearing a, quite a smart shirt today in our, you know, in our startup office. I like to wear a smart shirt probably then to dress it down with some less smart trainers. I, um, yeah, I, I, I think um, a wardrobe of smart shirts for a guy, you can always mix and match and dress it up or dress it down accordingly. So I don't know. I think my um, my 11 year old son despairs at my style. Um, so um, <laughs> he, he, he better not watch this back, I think. I know, it's funny. Um, our children are certainly what people that bring us down to earth, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, um, with so bells on. Ob obviously, you are co-founder of a travel brand, and mm. we cannot not pass without asking favourite holiday destination. Well, I think that's favourite question. Yeah, that's rather easier. Um, I think globally... Um, had an incredible trip to South America um, um, with my then girlfriend, now wife, a number of years ago. And Buenos Aires, I think, is the most fabulous city in the world. Um, and actually, Argentina is a place to visit. And um, how positive Argentinians are around Brits as well, which, you know, would surprise many people. Just there's so much going on there. Um, maybe closer to home. I, I mean, I love being outside. The Dolomites are the most incredible in Italy, most incredible part of Europe as far as I'm concerned. So I think... Um, yeah, I probably whether you're skiing, walking, cycling, whatever. I love, I love that part of the world as well. So they're probably my two top destinations. Yeah. Excellent. And um, top five items in a weekend bag. Oh well, number one, <laughs> the salt, the salty weekend selection. So our duo well, that we you... just launched. But I mean, that's a given. Is that one or two? So we, yeah, we just launched this a couple of weeks ago. So this is our lovely carry on. Tell favorite. us it. Tell me a little bit about that as well, because we've just, yeah. I will go on to this after, but we've just launched a collaboration with you as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we have these um, products as a gift with purchase on our website. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So tell me what is, this is a new, a new launch. So what, tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about them. Yeah, well, uh, our body product is not a carry-on product. It's 150 mil. So the first piece was we wanted to create something that, you know, you could take away as carry-on luggage. I mean, so many people, when you fly these days, it is carry-on only, isn't it? And not least because the airline's charging you significantly to, to, to check in to check in below. So we want to create something there. But we also want to create something that's handbag friendly, that can just slip into the beach bag, that covers you for a day. Our original formulation idea was that our face and body product together was perfect for a week-long sunny holiday. But so many of us are taking these, you know, lovely little weekend breaks now that we can travel again. So we wanted yeah. to create something that was friendly for that. Um, and that's what this is. And it's also, yeah. you know, it's a way to just discover our brand and to try the product as well. We did a brilliant event, a little music festival, Pub in the Park, um, a couple of weekends ago. Um, people love these. They love the uh, miniaturization, I think, as well. These yeah. really little, beautiful, dinky, dinky set. So, yeah, and it's great yeah. that, yeah, as you say. Brilliant stories customers are going to be discovering them over the next week or so absolutely we already have had um orders this morning who are all after those beautiful products so beautiful. though we'll take those as two items if you can oh, give us two. oh yeah. okay yeah um my trainers um because i'm I actually i don't run a lot but i love if i go to a new place to just go out for a jog just to orientate myself i'm a bit of a geography nerd i love trying to orientate myself particularly in a city so i def yeah. definitely there um actually airpods i'm a podcast fiend um so i like to like to be able to to, to listen to listen to a podcast um, and actually the other thing i'd probably bring uh, this isn't really oh uh, yeah it probably does qualify it's some local cash so you get so used to paying for everything with card and yeah. phone and one of the things i've discovered on a couple of recent trips is the most interesting little hole in the wall bars and restaurants you know just into europe let alone further afield that you're not you're not tagging with your iphone to pay there you still need some um hard cash yeah. so def definitely you know if it's europe pops definitely i i like to make sure there's some euros there to to buy yeah. a drink in that really really neat neat little um cutie hole, hole in the wall bar as well as um doing the corporate -y stuff excellent i i was going to ask ask you about favorite music but you could answer favorite podcast if you wish oh um music um, or podcast either or uh, I'll go music, I, but, but I'm an accident of my time. So I'm a, a child of the 90s. So it's um, it's very much 90s sort of Manchester music, Stone Roses, etc. My kids are Excellent. trying to get me into Becky Hill and Dua Lipa. But um, yeah, and again, they definitely despair of that musical taste. But yeah, no, yes. love, that, love, love that music of, of, of that era. 
Yeah, no, I do as well. So tell us, how do you relax in your busy life? You are a father, you are, a, you know, a founder of a brand. So how do you spend your time to relax? Um, just getting outside, whether it's walking, running, cycling, just getting outside, whether it's taking the dog for a walk. It's, um, you know, it doesn't matter. Just not, not being too cooped in. It's simple for me. Yeah. I, I can, I can feel the, the positive vibes happening the minute that I'm not, you know, sat at my desk or sat, you know, doing something around the house and get outside. It's just the world's generally a better place. I definitely, okay. the relaxation <laughs> vibes come, you know, it's simple really. Yeah, agreed. Um, so I always love to end off with a scent story. So, mm. um, you know, we, we all have that smell that takes us somewhere. Uh, we've talked mm. about it today. So do you have a scent story you'd like to share with us? I prepared this one. I knew this was coming from what you'd said previously. Um, <laughs> and, and, it, and it relates into Salty as well. Um, I think the place for the most memorable scent I've ever been was um, um, hiking on Table Mountain in, in Cape Town. I was very nice. lucky for a while, actually. Um, I looked after a part of the business I was working out. I looked after a contact centre in Cape Town. So I spent a good deal of time out there. And the smell of the fine boss that you get with the mixed vegetation there, it's a microclimate on the side of um, Table Mountain. And that scent is just, I, I can place it immediately. It's so evocative. Amazing. And there is into actually our body SPF, a little bit of that scent story was nice. brought into creating what's in there. So some of the, some of the herbal essences that you get there have definitely got a nod to to that scent. So that yeah. immediately takes me back to that moment and back to that piece. You know, relaxing, being outdoors. You know, exploring. So um, yeah. it's 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 everything you stand for over at stories. It's those scents that trigger those emotions, trigger yeah. those stories and those positive reactions that Absolutely. work for all of us. It sounds amazing. You want me to go, I need, I just feel I need to go there and the hot smell, oh. that smell. But it is very, um, I don't know whether you find it, but I find different countries all smell differently. <laughs> I think every country has their own smell. And as soon as I step off a cling, I actually am hit by a different smell. <laughs> so, um, so it's yeah, amazing definitely. that you're bottling that as well. And, uh, you know, and it's really personal then that when you're creating stuff, you're putting memories in there as well. Um, so Patrick, thank you so, so much for your time. And I just want to really to thank everybody who, who joined us today and who will join us later when we post this. But, you know, we just want to end up talking about, you know, our gift with purchase we are doing mm. on our website. And if somebody spends on a, a stories product, 60 points or more, they're going to get your beautiful weekend um, set um, absolutely complimentary and it is the same on your website what is happening over there that's right very similar so we've got your lovely I've got it right here actually your number one hand and body wash which we're gifting to people who buy our products on on salty.co.uk as well so um, yeah. I don't think I don't think we've ever been more aligned in terms of brand partnership because of what we've spoken about and yeah. similarities our businesses but it's so neat to be able to introduce your brand to our to, to many of our customers and vice versa so it's yeah, yeah lo lovely little exchange lovely little exchange Absolutely. And these these are proving very popular very popular yes and do you know it, it is it is such a pleasure to because when you find like-minded people you definitely want that relationship to grow and um, so i really look forward to us continuing um, in the future, doing lots of collaborations with new products, etc. Um, and Patrick, thank you again. And I'm sure everybody who's, who's listened will say how inspiring that you are and your brand. And definitely, I hope everybody will shoot over to your website and have a little look at what you have to offer. And again, thank you so much. I've enjoyed it. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you. You take care. Have a good day. Bye See now. See you later.